academics recently had, had to hold a bit of an L, which he took with, you know, zero grace, really. But it was hilarious to watch this play out in real time because in my position, or from my opinion, I've always been a little bit perturbed as to why the guy seems, seems to be super obsessed with like metrics, numbers and sales and shit. He's probably the person that's been responsible with artists kind of being obsessed with first week sales and platinum this and this malarkey as a metric of like success when in reality it should be more of a focus on the artistry and i think it's had a detrimental effect on the music i know it's not all academics fault it's mostly i think also the fault of like the digital streaming platforms because they kind of incentivize people to put out more tunes to put out longer songs to make albums way longer than what they need to be to increase people's you know ability to maybe stay on the apps to stream more music in order for the artists to make more money because the splits aren't the greatest so it's a whole cyclical thing like everyone plays a role in it but it's just a shame to see a whole younger generation of kids growing up in hip-hop and shit and r&b who are using or to see academics as like the number one platform for media and stuff and maybe somebody as a bit of a gatekeeper and a tastemaker in the scene be so obsessed with numbers all the time and that kind of be the number one thing they kind of you know have in mind when they're putting projects or music together we have to make think about numbers 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 when the artistry has to suffer the other thing that also used to always perturb me about academics was this impression i always got from him that he somehow felt as if he was just as important if not more important than the artist which i never understood really like the only reason why he's got the platform that he has now is because the artists exist like people want to hear his opinion about it they want to hear him cover the news but essentially his entire you know livelihood is centered around people who you would maybe describe as being infinitely way more talented than he is risking and will being willing to put out work and you know be criticized and whatnot for him to kind of have work to kind of rip apart and criticize in his own way so i've always thought that kind of tension to be very odd the fact that he's very successful and makes a lot of money is great but it doesn't mean that puts you on the same level as an artist you're not you're a media personality which is great but still that's just what it is um but then obviously i think over time the guy's making so much money and the splits in music are terrible and musicians in general don't make that much money that he's probably making i would say i would go as far as probably saying academics probably makes more than 80 percent of artists in hip-hop right because most of those guys don't make money and only the te top 20 and 10 percent do but one thing i felt like academics never really gave any kind of respect and credence for was how hard it is to be an artist like how difficult it actually is if you have no pool, no nothing, just a nobody starting from scratch to actually have people buy tickets to your show, you know, stream your music, download. It's not easy to do, but especially the show part of it, like to have people actually leave their house to come and see you is very, very difficult. And Academics got a bit of a taste of that when he was booked to be the headliner podcast right at roots picnic festival out there in festival obviously a festival um founded by the legendary group roots and um yeah he d quickly discovered how difficult it is <laughs> to fill out a venue because he was a headlining podcast um appearance here at that festival and only eight people turned up this is a quick clip somebody took from twitter um sharing this news and it looks incredibly depressing. So this is the stage where the everyone, you know, academics and his co-hosts are there doing their live podcasts. And this is where the audience are meant to be. Look at look at the crowd. It's legitimately non-existent. There's like legitimately eight people there. The camera pans across, I think a little bit here. I know that's okay. No, not in this clip, but there's another clip where it sort of like pans across and you see nobody. It's absolutely empty. And you'd imagine something like this would humble you a little bit because, you know, I've been there before where I've put on events and had only my friends turn up, had one person turn up and that person then leave, right? It's, it really is humbling, but it is just a thing that happens. It's just is what it happens at festivals. Oh, uh, sorry, for events, it's difficult to get people out of their house and um, difficult to get people to buy tickets, to actually attend. Like one of the annoying things that happened to me one time was where I booked a show I so I organized a party and the attendance pre-registration thing was fairly high. Like everyone clicked attending, like it was fucking in the thousands. And on the day, you had like less than 50 people turn up. So people will say they're gonna come to something 
and even if it's a free ticket and then decide not to come on the final day because of whatever reason, change their mind, whatever else, whatever happens. And it's just a natural state of things. So you always kind of, I think, I've always had kind of like a, you know, a deep respect for artists that put themselves out there, put on shows and try and cultivate a fan base because that shit isn't easy. So you'd imagine having that L and that kind of level of embarrassment that maybe Ak would see that as like an opportunity to kind of eat a bit of humble pie and sort of kind of take his licks from there and just accept that L, but he didn't. He kind of went on his podcast, or his, sorry, his live stream, and essentially did a lot of flipping capping, a lot of coping, and just rambled and ranted and raved, um, and just trying to justify why he had eight people at his show. And this is a small little section I'll play from his live stream, taken from his uh, YouTube channel, King Academics, where he tries to address it. And just hear his tone, right? So eight people turn up to his live show. No one's there. Everyone sees the pictures, the videos of it. It's kind of embarrassing. Just take the L, especially with somebody like him whose whole career has been centered on dunking on and, you know, teasing and insulting rappers who don't sell a particular amount or who don't get people at their shows. You put on the show or you get booked for a show and now, you know, you're not able to kind of fill it out and you get eight people. You'd imagine his response would be a little bit more humble. But hear, hear how he tries to justify this. Here. Come on. <laughs> All right. Okay. Is everybody here? We're, we're going to address the big shit immediately. Um, let me let me always just tell y'all this. First and foremost, my name is Big Academics, okay? Let me tell you also this. You know, I ain't you know, no cocky <laughs> shit nothing like that. Ain't no online nigga could talk shit about me. I created I created you. Without me, nigga, I'm like Soldier Boy and Chief Keith rolled up in one, nigga. Without me, you wouldn't even be talking shit about me. So any other nigga who talks shit about me but is on, a, on an online platform, I look at him as my son. I might have to baby you. <laughs> what? I might have to baby you because, again, <laughs> I'm doing the shit that you hope to do. I signed the deals you wish you would do. I'm the nigga who signed a multi-million dollar deal with Rumble. I'm the nigga who signed a eight-figure deal with, 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 with Spotify. I'm the nigga who popped on. Like Y'all niggas can't do nothing to make me feel down at all. So what a bizarre way to kind of frame it, right? No one's want you to feel down. They're just asking you to eat a bit of humble pie because his entire existence is based upon kind of comparing who does well, who doesn't do well. Not his existence, sorry. He's the theme of his kind of way of reporting on the news is mostly about the metrics. It's very rarely about like what is sounding great, right? What's actually a good song. Like who's a good artist? Like it's it, it's just it's mostly about the metric, which is what it is, isn't it? Because you know, in some cases, being about the metrics and caring about who's number one is also going to make you, by you know, proxy, cover the best people. But in this moment, if only eight people turn up to a show, you just have to eat a bit of humble pie. You have to just be able, like, okay, cool, my bad, take that on the L, move as it is. But this entire segment, it was like, third, I think, longer than this actually, the live stream. But only until the middle section did he finally kind of fess up and say, yeah, okay, I'll take the L, I accept it. But along the way, he pulled everyone else along, along down with him. He blamed Roots Picnic for booking him as a headliner and then having him perform at the same time as Lil Uzi Vert. He blamed um, the fact that it was in Philly. Like he was used, he was dragging everybody down with him. And one thing that I've heard him say that was, I thought pretty dumb was that he was like, oh, I don't care anyway. They paid me 30 grand. Now, some people didn't believe he got paid 30 grand. I did. I don't think he's got a reason to lie. Um, and also people really underestimate how much money these festivals are able to pay people. Um, the amount of money they generate and shit, whatever, maybe sometimes that I lost, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did get paid 30,000. But if you, if you know anything about putting on your own shows, if you know anything about performing at shows, that sort of thing you don't really kind of blow, gloat about. If anything, it kind of makes you feel a bit guilty when you do kind of, and I've had it happen to you before, where I went to DJ at one place and they booked me as a house DJ. And I guess I didn't know, or I didn't ask, I didn't make the correct flipping inquiries. But when I got there, they my version of house was like Chicago house, right? It was like, what, which I think is better house, right? But their version of house music was like, I don't know, at the time, it wasn't even a like disclosure. It was like just incredibly like FIFA music type of shit. And I was like, I don't play that stuff, right? That's kind of like EDM-ish, but that's what they wanted from me. So I went there with like a whole discography full of like old school house and shit, like house music from like the Chicago era and shit and onwards. And it fucking flopped 
but it also was one of the gigs I got paid the most for. So I got paid the most for it ever that I've been paid. And I felt so, so guilty coming back home because I did a terrible job. I cleared the dance floor. Everybody left. Like, <laughs> but I just obviously played until the end. Like I was playing my last gig on earth. And in the end, I got my money. I was like, I felt so bad. I didn't want to glow about it. But this guy is glowing about getting paid 30 grand to be the headlining podcast host. But then he's not able to pull more than eight people at the show. That's a bad thing because if anything... It's good that he got the money, but it also means next time he won't get 30000 because he's going to need to be able to show them he can bring some le value there to them. So I think that whole thing was fucking insane and bizarre, to say the least. But it was quite nice to hear him admitting it towards the end that he did catch the L. So this is a clip of him admitting towards the end that he did catch the L here. Courtesy of, Sometimes in so, courtesy of Chick's Move. Life, we all have to eat a slice of humble pie. Today, it was DJ Academic's turn to have a slice of humble pie. Now, Academic's, who brags and boasts and also lives and dies by numbers, the numbers did not work out in his favor this time. So, Academic's was headlining the podcast stage at the Roots Picnic. Somebody put out the footage today that pretty much showed Ak on stage and maybe 8 to 10 people listening to the podcast. Now, you guys know Ak always clowns the Rory and Mall. Last year, Rory and Maul had a podcast stage at the Roots Picnic, and this is what their stage looked like. And also, Summer Walker was performing at the same time. They were still able to hold a decent, sizable crowd. Now, while academic now the funny thing about this, what Chick Smooth mentions, is that academics has had an ongoing beef with Rory and Maul, ex, you know, Joe Budden podcast host that he hates Rory probably more, but he been beefing these guys from the get go. And they don't really respond to him too much. Rory probably more than more. But it must be so sweet if you're somebody that doesn't really like going back and forth with somebody where you're able to kind of succeed. As your response is your success. They keep going at you. They keep catching L's. And you keep responding by just doing better and better and better. So you don't respond to their fucking insults. You don't respond to their stuff that they're saying about you. You just keep it stum. You keep it cute. And you just keep performing. You just keep showing out. You just keep catching W's while they keep catching L's. That must be so sweet because for sure, Ak was putting a pressure on them online with how he was speaking about them, how disrespectful he was. And then for him to go to the same show, the same festival the next year, get booked as a headliner and then not be able to pull more than eight people is insane. And then him using the excuse that, oh, Louis Zivert was playing at the same time is nonsense because at the same time that they were playing, Erica Badu was on, right? So you can imagine the pressure they had to kind of maintain a, a certain crowd because if you've been to a festival, you'd know the festival grounds, there's different stages and sometimes acts on different stages clash. But if you like the act enough, you'll just stay there. So if you have fans and they want to see you, they will come and see you. It's not just because, oh, they all listen to Lil Uzi Vert. That's a nonsense excuse was performing apparently uzi was already performing so some people are shooting him bail saying well if you listen to uzi then you probably watch academics so if you had to pick between uzi and academics obviously you'd go with uzi but at the end of the day these are all excuses if you're headlining a podcast stage people should be coming there to see you now tonight on his live stream academics address this and i do like academics but sometimes he just comes off a little bit delusional for the first 30 minutes of his stream he gave excuses give a whole lot of money talk he gave a million and one reasons why no one came to his podcast show it wasn't until 30 minutes after his chat kept telling him bro just admit it you flopped and there's nothing wrong with flopping when act realized his fans were not stupid anymore that's when he finally admitted it here's what he said dirt flopped and i flopped <laughs> <laughs> dirt flopped and i flopped hey hey okay okay okay, okay. Uh, i'm gonna take my flop i'm gonna take i'm gonna take my flop i'm, I'm, I'm taking my flop Okay, I'm taking my flop. It's cool. And the reason why, I'm going to tell you why, I, again, even though I did give excuses, the reason why I'm going to stand on my flop and I'm going to take it is because when another nigga flop, I don't like hearing excuses. <laughs> when another nigga flop, I don't want him to say, oh, my my label ain't pushing. When, when young boy flop, I don't want to hear him like, oh, my Instagram wasn't up. I don't want to hear it. So I'm going to stand on my flop and I'm going to take that shit. What a bizarre human being, isn't it? Really interesting, bizarre human being. Like, imagine having that easily demonstratable flop that you should just be able to take with grace. Like, because there's many sort of like extenuating circumstances that would maybe explain this. Because I listen to a lot of act content 
and I didn't really hear him promote this show, right? It's not his show. It's a it's a podcast stage at a festival, music festival like that. Um, he also is a very online heavy person. His fan base, I would assume, don't really go to festivals, let alone the Roots Picnic, right? That's a very, you'd imagine more, a bit more of an older crowd. So it makes sense why Rory and Moore's podcast would have, would have done a lot better there than his would have done. But still, all those things don't excuse the fact that you only had eight people willing to listen to you during the peak set times or whatever the show was on. That's still like an L you have to kind of hold. And it's okay because there's reasons for it, but it's still an L you should just take with grace. But he's incapable of doing so because in his head, he has this idea that because he's the the richest and the most popularist and all this malarkey that it somehow makes you immune to losses. But the one thing that I hated uh, with his rant that kind of, you know, was a little bit distasteful, I thought in general, and a bit classless was the fact of like pulling others down with him. Or because little Dirk only sold 120,000 first week and it was meant to be sold 145, uh, that somehow him and little Dirk are comparable. Like because little Dirk technically flopped because he expected to sell more and he sold 20,000 less, whatever, all boohoo, that they're somehow comparable. Like dragging others down with him to make himself feel better is very, very, very bizarre. But ultimately, we know behind all the bravado that he knows that he flopped he knows he did there's no denying that he knows he flopped he knows it didn't go well you just take that l on the chin it should be a humbling experience it probably won't be i think if you're act the last thing you do i think he mentioned at the end of the clip that he's now gonna go out and book free shows i think he says he's gonna do them in la new york and like miami you know markets that he should do well at to kind of you know get back and rewrite this wrong I think you should just not focus on that because his focus and the thing that's made him the most money and made him successful and clearly people love the most is how good he is at online content. Just focus on that. You're not like a live experience, IRL community type type person. It's not going to happen. I'm sure the academics chat niggas discord group is fucking huge. There's no, I don't think any reason why anyone should, should expect that discord group or those online guys in the flipping chat or in the comments should be any reflection of just his fan base in real life. I don't think they are like that. And I think there are a lot of, the other thing is all about academics, he probably doesn't realise, there's a lot of academics fans out there who are secret academics fans. He says it himself. He has rappers, they're not willing to sort of like, you know, say, hey, I'm a big fan of your show, blah, 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 and, and let it be known. They just kind of tell him in secret. And I'm sure there's fans who watch the show who are also like that. So they kind of like, you know, it's he's sort of like their guilty pleasure. So imagine having a very online fan base, a very young fan base, a fan base that also that's, that's a bit ashamed of being a fan of yours and then trying to book a, a, a live show. It's not going to go as well as you think it's going to go. And maybe he's starting to realise now, maybe he's starting to realise now and should put a lot more respect on what it is to be an artist and how hard it is. Like the struggle of actually getting people to listen to your music, to buy your songs, to download your albums. It's not easy. Um, and I think that should be something that should go more in his kind of, it should come It should come into consideration more when he's going on his rants, you know, criticizing people, or just talking about people or whatever it may be. Because this obsession with metrics is nonsense because the vast majority of artists, they can't rely on metrics to pay their bills. They have to kind of other things. Um, they can't really use them to any kind of significant benefit because they're not part of the machine or they're not the priority. There's those things that kind of go on there. Issues in terms of with the label and ownership and contracts and whatever. So all those things sort of affect people's ability to sort of like sell a certain amount. So hopefully this is a wake a wake up corner lesson and he kind of, you know, understands that and is maybe willing to be a little bit more charitable with these artists and not be so critical when they don't sell a particular amount because, hey, being an artist and getting people to actually give a shit about what you do and turn up is really, really fucking difficult. Trust me, I've been there. Trust me, I've been there. So moving on from that one. Oh, and another thing I want to talk about quickly about is actually to end this <laughs> academics thing. What's the deal with DJ academics and girls? One thing that I thought that's always been very striking and obvious to me has been that part of the reason why I kind of find it hard to kind of get into act was that he was just incredibly, he still is incredibly lame, incredibly dorky and clearly somebody who like never really got any girls when he was like growing up and like essentially uses success and the notoriety to kind of 
excuse for maybe his inability to be cool in school and to get girls. And now that he's got money, he kind of feels like, you know, that gives him the ability to kind of like, you know, shoot his shit and let his kind of nuts hang, for lack of a better term. But you always kind of got that feeling, okay, this is definitely one of those guys that was never cool, never that popular, never really had friends like that. People maybe looked down upon him in a certain time. And now it's sort of like a revenge of the nerd situation where he's kind of, you know, ready to kind of enact revenge on people who didn't look at him really well because now he's got money. But another thing that's really interesting about him, right, that's really interesting, is his kind of perspective on women. Because he had this thing he used to do where he was like hard on thoughts. And his idea behind it was like, oh, you should never trick on a girl. You should never be buying her stuff. Like treat women, I don't know, I just got not say disposable, but, you know, make it hard for them to get stuff out of you or not give them any money or I don't know, just whatever. It was a weird kind of perspective on things because you would think someone like him would be somebody that would benefit from like simp trick sort of like culture and lifestyle because no one's going to be attracted to him based on his looks and personality because you know he's kind of fat not the cutest guy in the world and is a bit of a dork so you'd imagine a lot of women wouldn't be into him off the bat off that so he has to use his money and success to kind of get them which is not a bad thing i don't think that's a bad thing i think you kind of you always should use the the the, the tools at your disposal to get what you need really and truly I would never do it personally, but I think if you're somebody that doesn't have the greatest personality, maybe isn't the most physically attractive to most women, um, and if, but if you have money, why wouldn't you use your money to kind of attract some level of women? But again, he was hard on thoughts. So this update is fucking incredible, right? This is so interesting. Can I show this Instagram account called Rappers Down Bad, which is absolutely amazing? It says here, as a caption, right, on the, on the image of Ak. Harden Fox um, movement creator DJ Academics forgives his ex after she assaulted his mum, accused him of being physically abusive and exposed a personal prescription bottle of his. They are now back together and he's paying her 30k a month. And it says in the caption, DJ Academics forgives um, Che Glizzy after exposing him and, and assaulting him and his mother. He is now paying her 30k per month. I'm interested to know what do you guys think is the reason why someone like this, and I've always said this because I, I don't blame the women, why would somebody like Ak be attracted to girls like this lady that he's allegedly involved in? Like, because he seems to like these like ratchet hood girls who are very, I wouldn't say cold. They just, they've lived a life, you know? They, they've lived a real life. They've seen real things and they know how to get the most out of life despite maybe not having the best upbringing, despite not maybe having the best resources, they know how to kind of like get shit out of men and shit. They're very good at what they do. So for me, I would think someone like an act would be the worst. He should not, he should run away. He should run a mile from those type of women because they're going to run his pockets, right? And they clearly do. But he seems to clearly have a thing for them. Like he is drawn to that level of a woman. And part of me thought to earlier today that I wonder if the reason why he's attracted to those kind of girls is because most of them again it's not so most of them but the ones that he likes anyway they're not the most they're kind of ugly too in their own way personality physically face wise they're not the most cutest girls in the world right they're, they're no victoria Secret's model or whatnot so maybe because of that there's a, there's this kind of internal thing where you're like they're kind of on the same level looks wise personality wise they're kind of a bit ugly exuding in and out but you know the, my the thing that I'm saying on my end is that the girl is like she's lived a she's lived a more of real life like she's seen some shit so she's gonna run your pockets so the fact that this woman is the same woman who was the one that was responsible for leaking all those things about Ak earlier where there was pictures of him you know doing shit pictures of his spotty you know pimple covered belly that looked like he had some sort of sti picture of a bottle subscription that he was taking it looked like he had some sort of sti um you know allegedly accounts of him that woman assaulting his mum and shit breaking shit in, in his house and now the recent update about this just to kind of end this is that this same girl is also the same girl who allegedly um has now turned off academics as wi-fi this girl has turned off his fucking Wi-Fi, allegedly. Like, she's she's in the house now. I think she's refusing to leave his home. And she's turned off and shut off the Wi-Fi in Academics' house. Like, can you imagine? Can you imagine 
that being your life <laughs> like can you imagine this girl that you invite into your home is now the person that's uh, you know responsible for kind of living in your house under hostage or some regards and is now kind of oh there's, there's a picture of the belly and stuff decided to turn off the wi-fi in your home i think it's fucking fascinating i really really do i know most of you don't care about this sort of stuff but i legitimately think it's fascinating that act is for some reason attracted to these women who for, for the most part aren't good for him and are only going to cause him misery and pain but it's also interesting to see what happens in real life with these people when you get when you get no joy, no love when you're younger and you're never cool and you suddenly get money and you try and flex and use that money as a kind of badge of coolness and try and kind of flex on people that maybe look shit down upon you and all this malarkey and your views on women are a bit skewed because you don't have much experience with them in real life and all of it's mostly transactional. This is what ends up happening. Like I couldn't imagine paying, I couldn't imagine spending 30K on my own, on to, you know, on myself let alone spending 30k on another person honestly and i have expensive tastes like i also like designer clothes i like eating in good places i like going on holiday a lot like i like doing stuff right i like to spend money in my own way but i couldn't imagine spending 30,000 expenses on my own on myself let alone paying somebody 30 30k a month and being happy with it on top of whatever else they get paid like that to me is wild 